Hello everyone, welcome back to AS and A Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in today's video I am starting chapter 15 of the AS and A Level Biology syllabus. Chapter 15 is coordination and focuses on the nervous system. So in this video, we basically in this chapter rather, we're going to be talking about how the nervous system works, um, what neurons look like, muscle contractions, as well as how hormones help with coordination. So I hope that you find it very helpful. The videos are about six in number. I also just want to say that if you have just joined the channel, this is um, a chronological order of the AS and A-level biology syllabus. And so I'm posting everything by chapter content. So you would see that some things are like chapter 1.1, 1.2 and so on. I've also used the playlist function to create playlists for students that want to revise particular chapters. So you'll find that if you go to playlists on this channel, you're going to find playlists for chapter one where all the videos for chapter one are recorded and you'll also find the same for chapter two and all the subsequent chapters that have been recorded. So make sure you use that if you're trying to zoom in on a particular um, chapter. All right, let's get into coordination. This again is just a rehash from the homeostasis uh, chapter where we discussed the systems that coordinate, um, co that coordinate responses within the body. And uh, we have the nervous system, just like we said, we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, but we also have the hormonal system, which is called the endocrine system. The endocrine system releases hormones to respond to changes in the body and the nervous system System re releases electrical impulses to respond to changes in the body and we're just going to see how the nervous system works in the last chapter we sort of looked at homeostasis and we could see some hormones at work but with this chapter we're going to look more at the nervous system so just like we said the nervous system has two types you have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system central nervous system basically comprises of the brain and the spinal cord while the peripheral nervous system is everything else so all the nerves um, extensions that come out from the nervous the central nervous system so what really happens is that we communicate through nerve impulses and nerve impulses are amazing because they travel really quickly um, around the body and that is why they are better as response systems for us uh, because hormone systems endocrine systems might take a longer time um, so we have neurons in the body as well that help to carry the nerve impulses from source to target so an example i often use with students is say for example you're standing in the field and you're looking up at the sky and all of a sudden you see a rock falling towards you um, what exactly do you think would happen to you there first things first is that your eyes would act as the receptors so your eyes look at what is falling and it says oh my goodness that's a rock and then it sends an impulse an electrical impulse to the brain to say there's a rock coming towards me the brain then sends a response to the spinal cord or to the muscles to say hey you need to run and that is how you develop what we call a fight or flight response basically so the nervous system in this way is not that different from what we discussed in homeostasis where we were speaking about um, the negative feedback loop in this case however it's not really a negative feedback loop as such because it's not restoring a physiological factor back to a set point but rather it is causing you to respond um, in appropriate ways to impulses that you will experience now on the previous slide i said that we have neurons that help to transmit um, our nerve impulses and the three types of neurons you have to know in this case are the sensory neurons the relayed neurons and the motor neurons the motor neurons are different and something i just want you to realize here, i'm just going to use a red pen as usual um, is the difference between how these look so this is what the motor neuron is and you can see it transmits impulses from the central nervous system to an effector in homeostasis we already defined an effector so if you haven't watched that video the first video of homeostasis please make sure you do so so that you at least get the picture of what is happening here this over here this part here that has a dark um, nucleus like structure is called a cell body and extending from the cell body is what we call an axon so this is an axon over here i'm just going to write that with my pen and we have these here which are called dendrites 
So these are dendrites at the end. So it's D-E-N-D-R-I-T-E-S. And this obviously is important because sometimes in questions, especially in paper four, you might get the structure of a neuron and you're asked to sort of label the different parts. So please know that it's not difficult. You just have to remember you have an axon. The axon looks like a packet of sausages, if you want to think of it that way. Um, you have a cell body and you have dendrites. The motor neuron is different in the sense that its cell body um, lies in there at the end. Whereas with the relay and sensory neurons, these are the cell bodies. Um, with the sensory neuron, the cell body sort of extends out of the axon. Um, something else to let you know is that the motor neuron has a cell body that lies within the brain or the spinal cord. And that's because it transmits impulses from the central nervous system to an effector. The sensory neuron is the neuron that works from receptor to central nervous system. So again, using the idea or the example of a rock falling towards you, the sensory neuron would basically then be something that goes from your eyes to your brain uh, because the eyes are the receptor. So it goes from receptor to central nervous system in this case. The relay neuron simply helps to transmit the impulses within the central nervous system and the motor neuron would then take that from central nervous system to the effector. Something else that you also have to know is that in the axon of motor neurons, um, there are lots of mitochondria and vesicles, and we're going to discuss why this is important when we discuss synapses later on in the chapter. But for now, please study the structure of the different neurons. So with that said, the big question is, how do these neurons connect to each other? I mean, I've already put it on the previous slides that the sensory neuron would go from receptor to central nervous system. The relay neuron goes from central nervous system to central nervous system. And the motor neuron would take the impulse from the central nervous system to an effector. This is what we call a reflex arc. It simply means that a stimulus would go and hit a receptor and the receptor would transmit that, remember, as a nerve impulse or an electrical impulse um, to the sensory neuron. The sensory neuron basically then takes that and takes it to the relay neuron. The relay neuron is sometimes called the interneuron, but for your level, it's best to just refer to it as the relay neuron. The relay neuron will then transmit that to the motor neuron and the motor neuron goes to an effector and that is what yields a response. Now, when students look at it this way, many of them are like, wow, this looks like a long pathway. Uh, but I often tell them that this takes milliseconds to happen. And that is why your responses to certain stimuli are very, very quick. Um, for example, if you're someone who's afraid of dogs and you go visit a friend who has dogs, the moment you open the door and you see a dog charging towards you, you don't stop and you know say, okay, well now brain receive impulse, um, spinal cord send message, you don't do that. You mostly just run immediately or you freeze depending on what kind of person you are. So the reflex arc basically is a very, very um, strong and fast arc. And that is why we use nerve impulses to respond to most of our stimuli. Now, again, just rehashing how the reflex arc would work. It is a pathway through which impulses are transmitted from receptor to an effector. Uh, sometimes you would find that in some reflex arcs, there are no relay neurons, uh, but usually when they include questions for you about this, they would include a relay neuron. So the impulse that is generated would simply then travel from, again, the sensory neuron through the relay neuron, straight down to the motor neuron, and then that would cause a response. The response is very fast and it's also very automatic. Whenever I teach this in class, I usually try to surprise the student by maybe like just jumping in front of them. And you can see from the way they flinch immediately that their reflex arc is basically um, responding as quickly as possible to the impulse. Um, so that is the reflex arc. It's very quick and it's very efficient. Now, when we speak about neurons, we also speak about, I think I mentioned again, the um, different parts. And this here is a lovely labeled part of a neuron. So I hope that um, you're able to look at the different parts from here. So you can see these are the dendrites. That's the cell body um, with a nucleus in between. This length here is called the axon. Um, but between the axon, around the axon, we have what we call the myelin sheath. So the axon is actually like a rod. If you want to think about it that way, just look over here. Um, you'd probably be able to see, look between the big bulges. You'd be able to see that it seems like it's a rod that's passing through and ends at these terminal ends here. But you can see also that there are these bulging bits that surround it. 
those bulging beads are called myelin sheaths. So the myelin sheath is like a sheath that's made of Schwann cells. Think of it as some kind of protection that surrounds the axon. And what it does is that it enables the axon to conduct um, impulses really fast. Uh, what happens with this is that when an impulse is generated in the axon, what would then happen is that the impulses are able to jump um, over these. They basically jump from one end. I'm not doing a good job here but they jump from one end to the next. So they jump to these spaces in between. And those spaces in between are called the nodes of Ranvier. And so myelinated neurons are basically able to conduct impulses a lot faster because the action potentials jump from one node of Ranvier to the next, and we call that saltatory conduction. Always remember that the myelin sheath is also made up of Schwann cells, um, and it's just like an insulation of some sort that helps impulses to move really fast um, compared to unmyelinated neurons. I'm going to stop here for this video. This is the introduction to um, coordination and I hope that it has been clear what has been explained so far. In the next video I will go a bit deeper by explaining action potentials um, and how we basically conduct and transmit impulses. I have tried as much as possible to make it a very light video so I hope that you find it helpful and not too heavy. Um, I also have an explainer video on action potentials so I hope that that is helpful as well. All right thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope you watch the rest of the chapter. Um, have a good time. Until the next video, goodbye.